So we just spent some time uh, in our previous video looking at what happens when we're finding the limit of a continuous function. Uh, and when that happens, we're, we're just allowed to plug that x value that we're interested in right into the function and just take the answer that it provides. And, and really, the, the function itself doesn't have to be continuous everywhere. It just has to be continuous in the little area that we're looking at, specifically right around that x value. Uh, but there are times where if we were to just do direct substitution, uh, we're going to run into issues. It's not going to give us a nice answer because um, it's not continuous there. But a really good sign that it's not continuous is when you get 0 divided by 0 when you plug that x value in. So our, our next few examples uh, just kind of walk us through some ways of, of how you might work around that when you do get 0 divided by 0. Uh, we often call that the indeterminate form. It means that algebraically there should be something else uh, that we can do. So this video is just going to cover this first example here where we're looking at uh, 2x squared minus x minus 3, and we're dividing by x plus 1. Uh, this is kind of a, a specific sort of example. Um, if we rearrange some things, it would, it would show us something a little different once we get into some calculus. Uh, but this has been rearranged a little bit into a nice way for us. Generally, the first thing that we should try to do is, is simply just to see if we can factor things apart. Um, so th this one is maybe a little bit more challenging, um, but what we would have here, and one thing I, I, we probably have not had to do a whole lot, um, before or any time before we actually substitute that x value in, so in this case negative 1, we have to keep writing this limit business as, as kind of a reminder. Um, that's just kind of the notation we need to have. We need, I know it's kind of a pain and it gets repetitive, but that is something that we want to try to do. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is take that numerator and break it apart into two parts. And so there's a process you can go through, um, but we can also just kind of think through this a little bit. I know that when I foil this back together, the, fir the first two parts have to get me 2x squared. So I know it's got to be 2x and x. Um, the numbers that I'm looking for, so the number I'm going to put there and there, when I multiply them together, that's got to get me the negative 3. And then the o and the i of foil have to get me combined that negative x. So, so when I look at the, the blue underlined pieces, I know it's got to be... Um, negative 3 and 1, or negative 1 and 3, and it could be kind of flip-flop where they go. You just have to try a few things until you, until you figure out the right uh, place, but for this one it would be a minus 3 here and a plus 1 there. Um, so just quickly try to foil it back together. Make sure you do end up getting uh, the, the polynomial that we started with, the quadratic that we started with. Uh, but another good sign that, that that's what it should be is that our original denominator was x plus 1. And so now we, we kind of know that these would just kind of cancel off. It's that idea of a whole. Uh, if, <coughs> excuse me. If you go to the very first example in this lesson, um, we kind of did something very similar. We just really weren't talking about limits yet. Um, but now at this point, what this is saying is that a simplified version of this is just uh, looking at the function 2x minus 3. Um, so this original equation up here, whoops, did not mean to do that. Let me get the high. There we go. Highlighter. Okay, this original equation up there simplified to this, which kind of simplifies to this. These look the same, except this one is continuous, and this one has a hole at negative one, and that's kind of what we're interested in. Um, so I say that, and that reminds me that I really should have said this at the very beginning. Um, you should always check. So when I look at, at this original, if I were to plug in negative one here, I think it's pretty easy for us to see that the denominator is zero. But up here, if I plug that negative 1 in, in this part I get a positive 2 in the end. This would get me a positive 1 in the end when I have a negative negative 1. And then I subtract 3, all of that together gets me 0. So I do have 0 over 0, and that's the sign that we need to try something like this. So I should have started off the problem by, by saying that. So we got rid of that issue of the whole. Now we have the idea of what it looks like when it would be continuous. And now I'm allowed to plug that negative 1 right in there. So now... No limit notation because now I'm going to plug in the negative 1 where the x is. There's no issues in doing that. Um, and if I were to continue to um, go through and solve this, I would get negative 5. So that's the answer. And what it's saying is if I were to look at uh, the original function up here, as I get close to negative 1, both the left and the right sides are actually approaching negative 5. And so we could look at a graph of that, and that would kind of verify some things too. So we'll stop there, but we have a few more examples that um, look at some other algebraic tricks that we could use.